Pneumatic or battery powered impact wrenches? Are they all the same on the inside? We'll find out in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. <laughs> You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. <laughs> We're all used to hearing that sound in tire shops, maybe even shops of our own and in mechanic shops, those pneumatic or air powered impact wrenches. However, over the past decade or so, battery powered impact wrenches are definitely encroaching on that past stronghold that pneumatic impacts had on the industry. So these battery powered tools are becoming stronger, smaller, and lighter. However, they're not quite as light as air tools yet. However, what you don't have to have, you don't have to have an airline attached to you wherever you go. But are they the same on the inside? We're going to take them apart and actually have a look at them. We've got the DeWalt DCF 894 here. They're considering this their mid-torque impact wrench. And we have a SunX Tools, I believe it's the SXMC12 uh, pneumatic powered impact wrench. Both these are great impact wrenches. They're both in kind of that mid category. I believe they claim this is 500 foot pounds, although they don't really uh, specifically say is that nut busting or loosening torque or is that fastening torque. And on the DeWalt side, they claim this has 330 foot pounds. However, they do claim that's fastening torque. So we know on the loosening or nut busting side, this is probably closer to that, you know, 400, 450, maybe even 500 foot pound range, which will put it in close proximity to this tool. So my point is, both of these tools are going to probably achieve about the same amount of work. So let's take a look at the innards of this and actually see the differences and similarities. Okay, so what we have in front of us, we have the DeWalt DCF 894, which is their mid-torque impact wrench. I think this came out in like 2018 or 19, uh, but it's still around today for their uh, most powerful mid-torque impact wrench, that middle of the road impact wrench. Great little impact, nothing wrong with this. Uh, this is SunX Tools pneumatic impact wrench. Uh, I think this thing's been around for four or five years as well. It is the SXMC12. Uh, now this is rated, I think they say 500 foot pounds and they don't dictate whether that's loosening or tightening. Um, I'm assuming that's probably breakaway or nut busting torque. Uh, the DeWalt's rated at 330 foot pounds. That's rated at fastening torque. So I'm sure nut busting torque is going to be a little elevated from there, probably closer to the 500 foot pounds that SunX is claiming as well. Now, what's the difference in these two? Obvious, this is pneumatic, this is air powered, so requires a compressor, requires quite a bit of volume, uh, especially if you're using this repeatedly. Um, typically somewhere around 90 to 100 PSI is what they're rated at, uh, so that's where you need the compressor to be. Um, so you need a decent compressor to run one of these. Uh, with the DeWalt, obviously we're running off a battery, in this case the 5 amp hour. Uh, RPMs wise, on the, on the battery power tool, on this specific DCF894, I think RPMs is max at 2000 RPMs. So not a real fast tool per se, uh, but impacts per minute are like 3100, so around 3000 impacts per minute. Now you change over to the air tool, and this is probably maxes out at eight or 10,000 RPM. So five times as many as the DeWalt, at least four or five times as many. Uh, but then blows per minute or impacts per minute, it's only 1,300. So it's utilizing some, some different mechanics, if you will, to perform pretty much the same job. So let's take a look at the internals of these just to see if we can see a difference in how these work. And as we can see with the pneumatic, <laughs> That old sound that we're used to hearing, you know, in the tire shops, in the mechanic shops, real high RPM, uh, typical air impact. So let's pull this off and we'll pull this apart and see what we can find. By the way, if you haven't pulled one of these apart before, you probably want to check a schematic before doing so. And specifically, like on this tool, when I push this out the front, we have a little ball bearing that just fell right here. And that works as a detent with a spring right inside this hole right here. So again, make sure you see a schematic or at least understand how these things come apart. 
Pull the backing plate off of here. Obviously, we're going to have some air chambers. That's how this works under high pressure air. Uh, so you see we have some, some cavities here. We'll see some more here in just one moment. We also have a little O-ring right here that goes onto that shaft there that comes through to operate the forward and reverse. Okay, so right away, here we have, this would be the motor, if you will. So rather than an electric motor that runs off a battery, uh, we have some different veins right here. And these veins, be careful with these because these kind of float in there. And they ride inside that little canister there. And with RPMs, with, uh, with rotations, those will fly out and those veins will basically ride against this cylinder here, creating uh, the RPMs, creating the power behind driving the impact. And we'll look at that here in a second as well. So here's the cylinder. This rides on, and again, take, pay close attention of how this goes together, because this pin then goes through that hole right there. And again, as this flies open, these veins will expand out here and ride against here and then close up as it gets up here. And that only happens with RPMs as they fly out through gravitational pull, if you will. That's why it's also critical that it's very clean inside an air impact. And then eventually you're going to get this. Something like this anyway. So now we have our anvil. There's a bearing plate right there. Which again, you have veins here in this plate. So again, understand how all this goes back together. And then here's your half inch anvil. And here's your impacting mechanism. So as the veins turn, again, at probably eight to 10,000 RPMs, it rides on that shaft right there and it drives this mechanism, which then drives this weight to drive the anvil here. And it basically hits on that anvil, skips over, comes around again and hits again. So this weight engages on the anvil and then you'll see here as it comes around one more time and that weight comes up over and then drops in again. So it's the opposite of effect is happening. Actually, this is turning and as it engages that anvil, it grabs for a second and then hits and then jumps over, comes around again and engages one more time. But you can see from that anvil that that's only happening once every revolution. So once every revolution, it's, uh, it's impacting. So we'll leave that apart for right now and let's take a look at the cordless or battery powered unit. Okay, let's take a look at the DeWalt. And that was easy enough. Nose cone comes off and here's our anvil. Take our anvil out of here, which is interesting in here, just rides on this uh, thrust washer there. So that, an that anvil rides there on that thrust washer. And you can see the dogs here on this anvil. This is, these are called the dogs here. And I'll show you here in just one moment. We can take the whole planetary and impacting mechanism out of here. So in here, basically you see uh, we've got a shaft in there and then we've got some gears along that outer ring. And along that outer ring, so basically the center shaft is connected to the motor in there and connects, in, connects on the inside of these planetary gears. And then these planetary gears, the outsides of them ride on that ring in there. So it's basically a big gear reduction. So even though the, uh, the electric motor may be spending, you know, 10, 15,000 RPMs, uh, it's actually slowing down this to a max of 2,000 RPMs. So you're developing torque uh, through RPMs, if you will. 
And then what we have here is a big spring that's helping with this impacting mechanism. So rather in this case where you had one weight that was rotating around the outside of the anvil and then once every revolution impacting, here we're getting two impacts on every revolution as you can see here because what's gonna happen, this weight is gonna spin around again by driving from the electric motor on the planetaries and as it comes around and these dogs collide, so these V-shaped dogs here collide with the rectangle dogs here on the, on the anvil, as it hits, it counteracts that spring and overcomes that spring pressure. And what happens is this pushes back and jumps over these dogs and then engages one more time. So now in this case, you see that on every revolution, we're gonna get two impacts because obviously every 180 degrees, we've got a set of dogs. So we get an impact here, skip over, and 180 degrees later, we impact one more time. So even though we're driving this slower, we're still getting two times the impacts per revolution rather than this one. However, we're overcoming it on this because of sheer RPMs. Um, and that's why that it's still able to develop as arguably as much power, even some argue even more so than on an electric or cordless impact. So quite a bit of difference there on doing the same thing, especially when we look at the actual counterweights and spring mechanism and everything else. The interesting thing on this one, on the air impact, we're not using a, you know, a counter spring at all to develop any of that uh, spring pressure, if you will. Uh, it's using all the rotating mass and the internals of this drum to accomplish the same thing. So quite a bit different engineering in a cordless impact uh, versus, versus a pneumatic impact. Now let's see if we can get these back together and they work once more. That one works. This one's a little more cumbersome on these air. Uh, if I were really trying to clean, to, uh, to maintain this, I'd probably clean all this up, re-lube everything, but I'm not gonna do that right now. One thing you gotta be concerned with is these pins will fall out of here and you really want this uh, anvil kind of sitting in place and that weight to kind of be neutral somewhere in the middle. Slide that in. You know what's interesting about both of these tools is they're, they're quite simplistic on the inside. Even though the actual impacting mechanisms are quite different on both of these, that was interesting as well, uh, the commonness of it just being a very simple type design is interesting to me. Um, in the Air's case, they're actually utilizing the, uh, the air pressure and the high RPMs to then create torque on the low end and get the hitting power and kind of on the opposite side on the electric or battery powered impact wrench they're toning down the rpms and uh, creating that power on driving a larger hammer and a counteracting spring to develop that power so utilizing the torque of of that electric motor but even gearing that down to where it's turning slower to drive a heavier hammer if you will whereas on the air side it's, you know, again, using probably eight, 10,000 RPM. That's why we hear that, you know, real high zing. And then on the battery power tool, it's kind of, it's kind of disheartening, isn't it? I mean, doesn't that sound awesome? And this is just kind of blase, but that's not what we're after is the sound. But anyway, my point is they're using different ideas to accomplish the same task, but both of them are doing it very well. So. Uh, interesting to see the kind of the vein mechanism uh, on the air impact and how it utilizes the air pressure to then turn a one-to-one -one ratio on this impact, but you're only getting that one hit uh, per revolution, where on the cordless side or the battery-powered side, you're actually getting two hits for every revolution and driving that larger hammer, but 
both still driving a half inch air impact or <laughs> both still driving a half inch anvil. Hey, let us know what you think about this. Just thought it'd be interesting to see the inside, see the guts of an air tool versus a battery powered tool. If you don't mind, would you keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter? And if you liked our video, would you give us that thumbs up and maybe even hit the subscribe button? Also, if you didn't like our video, by all means, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.